محمد خليك وياي فاتح اذا ما عندك كوسه انا بدي نضبط الصوت صباح الخير اليوم 29 4 2020 رمضان مبارك نصور اخر محاضره الي لايف او اخر محاضره اصلا بالسمستر الي اسمعني دعاء او هبه تسمعوني يعني صباح الخير دكتور ايوه صباح الخير جيد جيد عشت كذا فالسمستر بعد ان شاء الله اسبوعين الاسبوع الجاي دكتوره فاديه كواليتيتف والاسبوع اللي بعده دكتور محمد الانكزايتي ونخلص ان شاء الله نبلش اليوم بموضوع جديد وحقيقه قصير بس حنعطيكم سم تيبس اباوت كوندكتنج سيرفي سو توداي ويل توك اباوت هاو تو كوندكت سيرفي evaluate patient and outcome satisfaction. As you know, patient satisfaction is a very important topic because it's one of the outcome of the healthcare system. So we not only care about clinical outcome and education safety, also we care about patient satisfaction. We need our patient to be satisfied when, they, <coughs> when we are done with the service. So, Keep in mind, satisfaction is very important, especially here in private sector, because you need to convince them to come back again uh, to you as a healthcare providers or as a institution, hospital in general, in every business, you, you need to have patient satisfaction. Today, you need to talk about uh, structure uh, process outcome model, also another model called ECHO model which is uh, related to economic, clinical, and humanistic uh, outcome. We need to uh, describe the four concept of patient satisfaction, because uh, measuring patient satisfaction, we need to measure four concepts. Uh, then we need to uh, give you some tips or advice about how to conduct survey in general. Keep in mind, conducting survey is not easy and it's not straightforward as uh, some of us may, you know, uh, may, may think it's easy, I can just write down some questions and those questions will be a good survey. No, you need to test your survey, you need to design your survey in a, a solid way so it will be get published in good journal. So let's go to the structure process uh, outcome model. Also, we call it uh, Dona, uh, Dona Bibian, which is the author of this. Uh, every uh, model or theoretical model in general try to help uh, audience and authors to structure their uh, variables, structure their factors. So instead of putting them in an organized way, we need to put them in organized way. For example, this model says we have three components or three domain. We have to have structure. For example, I'm talking about the healthcare system in general. In any healthcare system or settings, we have three components or domains, structure, process, and outcome. So structure means anything we have the resources, personnel, uh, uh, material, the setting itself, physical stuff. For example, in the pharmacy, we have shelves, we have, uh, we have uh, computers, we have uh, anything, hardware could be software, and also personnel. This is a structure, it's a material, the material we have. The second domain, it's the interaction between the personnel or, for example, interaction either between the pharmacists themselves or interaction between pharmacists and the patient. So any interactions, the process we are, we are dealing with, medication administration, medication dispensing, prescribing, this is process. Eventually, we need to measure the outcome. Outcome either clinical, or economics, or humanistic. 
So outcome could be uh, patient health, could be medication safety, could be organization profit. So outcomes could be from patient point of view, could be from pharmacy point of view, from hospital point of view. So we always have structure, we have the process, process usually interaction, and at the end we need to measure the outcome. If we have uh, an appropriate or inadequate outcome, that's mean we need to go back and fix the structure and the process, or both. Either we have an adequate structure or an adequate process, which lead to an adequate outcome. So this model basically, as I mentioned, for example, when we say about structure, we have pharmacy, computer, software, robot, and also the personnel themselves, the qualification of the of the pharmacist, knowledge, social communication skills. So it's the characteristic of anything available in this pharmacy, either hard stuff or personal. The process, as I said, it's, it's the, the care itself. When I dispense, when I counsel patients, when I administer medications, all those are processes. We need to take care of those for us. Outcome, we can measure outcome using a model, other economic outcome, clinical, humanistic. So, this uh, Donabigian or SPO uh, model, as we mentioned, will help us to organize our factors. We need to measure the factors and if we want to think the outcome, we need to measure the structure and the process itself. Here we have another figure. Structure could be electronic health record, could be the knowledge of the pharmacist, the process, the process is the healthcare process itself. Screening, administration, counseling, dispensing, the behavior we are doing in our healthcare system. The health outcomes contains usually three domains, clinical, economic, and humanistic. For the clinical, we know the clinical, a disease, either the disease, uh, the, the health itself, the clinical outcome of patient, either patient may have better health, better signs symptoms, a better control of blood the glucose, blood sugar, blood cholesterol, control all those uh, clinical measures. And also could be related to medication safety. Economic, it, economics is either from pharmacy point of view or, or MOH point of view or patient point of view. So from patient point of view, how much they paid out of pocket. From MOH point of view, how much this patient cost us. Humanistics related quality of life of patients. The physical, social, quality of life. Because sometimes, uh, this patient ha has uh, an adequate humanistic outcome, such as pain, depression. So it's hard to be measured as a clinical outcome, but it's a humanistic outcome. Humanistic could be satisfaction, which is our topic in this uh, lecture. We need to measure patient satisfaction, one of the most important uh, outcome in humanistic, because if patient is unsatisfied, they will talk badly about your setting, about your pharmacy or clinic, and they will discourage people to come back to your pharmacy. So, satisfaction is important for you as a, a business manager or as a stakeholder in this company. A model again, the economic outcome is related to the cost. The cost could be direct, could be indirect cost. I will talk about this late in the next couple of slides. Clinical outcome, we care about patient, patient health. Humanistic, we also care about patient feeling, patient satisfaction. So not only sh should care about patient physical, uh, clinical outcome, we care about, we should care about patient 
healing satisfaction. So uh, the United States, they have mostly private sector. So it's a bit near also we have here, but they care. They care about the quality. They care about patient satisfaction because uh, it's business and uh, they, they need people to come back to, to their clinic and hospital. But here in our public sector, we usually don't care about patient satisfaction because we provide free services. So it doesn't matter if patient come back or not because there is no personal profit for, for the employees. So there is no incentive for them to provide uh, a high quality service or an increased patient satisfaction. So really, it depends on the goal. If we need to put the patient satisfaction as a goal, we need to take care of this aspect. Uh, so the let's talk about direct cost. I think we measure uh, we talked about this in the panel economic lecture last semester, but this is just a reminder. When I say direct cost, we think we can measure directly, such as cost of the medication, cost of hospitalization, cost of the clinic visit cost of the lab itself, lab test. So it's direct cost. Sometimes it could be cost of the adverse drug events. If this patient will have bleeding, they have to go to the hospital, stay a, a night in the hospital, they need to pay money. So direct cost could be related to the clinical outcome and also related to patient adverse drug events. So the indirect cost, Indirect cost, sometimes we, for example, it's the direct cost basically could be medical or non-medical. For the medical one, I just mentioned those examples. For non-medical direct costs, such as transportation, hotel, food, all those will cost money. For an indirect one, it's the opportunity cost, how much I lost when I went today to the hospital. It's lo loss of productivity. So my salary for one day multiplied by how many days in the hospital, so I lost, we call it indirect cost. So I need you to keep in mind direct cost could be medical, non-medical, for the indirect cost usually related to opportunity cost, usually loss of productivity, or absence from your workplace. So as you can see in the United States, they have stats and everything, and only for the hypertension, they spend or they expect or as the direct costs are 54 billion, while indirect costs, it's almost 20. Keep in mind, indirect costs could be huge. 19.2 billion is really large chunk of money. This is just indirect cost. Loss of productivity or mortality. So Accomodo, we are done with the E, which is economic. Now we're dealing with the clinical. The clinical, I think, we have to have measure. We usually need measures, we need numbers. We need to measure through lab data. Uh, 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 it's hard to rely on the symptoms, so basically rely on the measures, side. something we can, like temperature, pulse rate, respiratory rate, uh, blood pressure, blood glucose, HbA1c, cholesterol, those are numbers. So we need to measure an, uh, one of those clinical outcome measures to understand if this patient under control or not. For example, blood pressure we refer to the blood pressure control, HPA1C we refer to the blood glucose control. So clinical outcome could be disease or could be drug outcome. 
there are the outcome, either good stuff, which is the control of blood work, or bad stuff, adverse like events. So adverse like events are related to clinical outcome. We should care about medication safety. We should reduce the chance of risk because we not only need to improve or reduce the symptom, but we also need to minimize adverse leg events. Humanistic. Humanistic means related to patient themselves, related to their quality of life, physical functioning, general health, status, satisfaction. Quality of life, we can measure it by SF, short for 36, or SF12. This will measure social and physical health. For the satisfaction, we, we will talk in details about how we can measure the, the patient's satisfaction. So quality of life measures. Keep in mind, I don't want all the details, but at least I need you to remember. Remember, we have physical health, we have mental health. For physical, we have the physical functioning, general health, body pain, role, physical, and for the mental vitality, social functioning, mental. That means the patient should only, we need to measure quality of life, it's not just physical, it's mental, social. So some people, they are physically fine, but mentally or socially, they are having problems. So for pharmacy, it's a private business. I'm talking about community pharmacy. We need people to be satisfied. Why? Because I need them to come back to our pharmacy and I need to enhance the pharmacy reputation. I don't want to lose patient or I want want to lose customer. So as you can see, uh, there is an entity in the United States care about measuring quality. They have Pharmacy Quality Alliance. This entity really cares about everything related to satisfaction. They develop measures, they measure satisfaction, so it's, it's organization efforts to enhance the quality. Like, but here we have like personal efforts. We don't have standards for quality measures. They have standards for quality measures. For example, the adherence. They need to enhance the adherence. The BDC, proportion of drug uh, consumed, higher is better. Above 80 will be considered adhered. Dr. Amar Aila, I think, will have a, a seminar uh, at the Zoom meeting this Friday about the adherence of medications. One of the outcome measures we need to enhance our satisfaction or enhance our quality should be patient adherent to medication. So we need to measure the quality. We need to measure patient satisfaction. To measure everything, we need a measure, we need a parameter. For example, medication adherence, PDC, it's a parameter. Patient satisfaction, we can measure it by a survey. I did two lectures, uh, sorry, two studies about patient satisfaction. One uh, in the last year, one of the diploma students measured patient satisfaction at community pharmacy. And I think I did one again about the pharmacy satisfaction in general. So why we care about patient satisfaction? We need them to come back to our pharmacy. This is the business for a private specialty. So for every outcome, we need to measure the structure, the process, because they will lead to outcome. How can which factors influence satisfaction? Again, structure and process. Structures our healthcare setting resources and the process, the way we behave. How can we take care of the patient? 
if we spend a long time with them, if we answer their questions, if we address their concerns, they will be satisfied. If we have chairs they can sit on, if we have clean, nice ph uh, pharmacy, if we have uh, good air conditioning, if uh, their waiting time is short, we can enhance patient satisfaction. So if, if our patient is unsatisfied, we should go back and fix either or either structure or process or both. So we expect we did something wrong because at the end, this patient is unsatisfied. I'm talking about satisfied from us. I'm not talking about satisfaction in general because in general, they, this patient may be unsatisfied from disease or this is external factors. I care about my pharmacy services. كم سؤال لهنا أنا عيني أبو سؤال نواف حال وفي العسانين مال رمضان أبو سؤال نعم دكتور يا واضحة يعني دكتور تقريبا نفس المحاضرة اللي خدناها بالسمستر الأول أنتوا تويتكم هاي المحاضرة تويتكم إياها يعني دكتور مو نفسها بس تقريبا مثلها اللي هي همي أنا مال الإيكو موديل كانت شنو موضوعها هذيك دكتور هي كانت بال شو اسمه؟ بالفارماكوك فارماكوك انا ما هي نفس الشيء دكتور هم انا مال شو اسمه العفو هنا دكتور هم انا كانت معي هيومانستيك فاليو والكلينيكال اوت كام بس ما حكينا على الساتسفاكشن والسيرفي ما حكينا على السيرفي اي ما حكينا بالضبط دكتور بس هم سالفتنا قلنا انه احنا نخلي لها سكورات مثلا ونخلي هاي السمايل فيسز وهي ريبريزنت انه ساتسفيكيشن مال البيشنت وشي جيد والدايركت والاندايركت كونست سالفتنا بيها اوكي بس مو اكزاكتلي نفس المحاضره يعني ها؟ اي مو اكزاكتلي بس المواضيع سم هاو سيميلار يعني جيد جيد ممتاز وي هاف فور دومينز اور فور uh, components we can uh, use it's better to use four of them to measure patient satisfaction <clears throat> first we need to measure the performance evaluation performance of your setting this confirmation of expectation patient will bring expectation if you exceed patient expectation we will end up with better satisfaction. If we not, uh, if we uh, if we uh, didn't meet the expectation, we may end up with insatisfaction. Effect-based evaluation is related to emotion. Sometimes when you when you buy something from a a, a seller like. A, they will tell you some words, nice words like "you are welcome." Please come back, and if you need, we can help. Those are nice words. They may give you some kind of satisfaction at the end. Even the price will be costly, pricey, but some nice words will help you, you know? So it's related to your emotion that equity base, you will evaluate how much efforts or money you put in the service. I will talk about this details in the next slides. So performance evaluation, we care about the surface of our pharmacy or healthcare setting. I mean the surface, healthcare surface, our dispensing, our administrations, our diagnosis. We provide surface. Like when you go to mechanic, the mechanic provides surface to your car. So are you satisfied with the mechanics and uh, services? Is it good quality or high quality uh, or uh, low quality? So service can be from any business or any, you know, doesn't like uh, limited to, to healthcare setting, but in general, healthcare setting provides service and you need to measure yourself. And you can measure by give them this uh, liquor, the scale, which is from extremely unsatisfied, unsatisfied, extremely unsatisfied, usually one, unsatisfied, you get two, 
neutral group three, and I need to convert this Likert scale to numbers because uh, I may measure this Likert scale as uh, continuous variable. If you need to measure the continuous variable, you can do this by giving number from one to five. Sometimes people they choose one to seven. Personally, I think one to five is a more common one because it's not so long like one to seven, very, very extremely or something like that. Or it's not like short, like only agree, disagree, neutral. In general, five Likert scale is more common. So ask patient, are you satisfied with our service today? They will write the satisfaction. If it's satisfied or very extremely satisfied, you are perfect, you are done. But neutral, mm, also you need to go back and reevaluate. If it's unsatisfied, this is the problem. We need to go back and fix our, and looking for the reason. Is it structure reason or is it process reason? If the pharmacy, everything is good and fine, but I didn't welcome the patient, I didn't talk with them nicely, I didn't educate them, I didn't consult them about their medications, they may be not satisfied. Even your pharmacy is nice and cool, everything is fine, but you didn't do well in the, in the process, you didn't do well in the council. So you need to have both structures and process, not only the process, not only the structure, both, they will have good combination. So performance evaluation, keep in mind, I'm talking about the service only. Is it convenient, reliable, accessible, timely matter? Domain number two, I need you to um, remind, remember this term, this confirmation of expectation. Patient will bring expectation. That means this patient will expect you will spend five minutes in counseling or three minutes in counseling. Or expect you will do this smoothly or they will finish in five minutes. They don't have to wait. If you can exceed those expectations, you are good. If not, this patient may be unsatisfied. So we always need to enhance, improve our service. Like in the United States, they have drive-through service in, in pharmacy. So if you have kids in the United States, you cannot leave them in the car alone. So sometimes some moms, they, it's, it's, it's hustle to take all the kids out of the car because usually they have three kids, for example, and all of them are tied with car seats. And they, some of them, they may have new baby. So it's hard to take all those three kids in the winter outside the car, get inside the pharmacy, wait for 20 minutes or whatever, then, take them out, it's really hustle and convenience. So they call the pharmacy, please, I need to read for my prescription, this is my information, this is my name, this is what I need to read for this medication. When I should come, they say, okay, please come in 30 minutes. So the mom would drive the car and the drive it through and stop at the window of the farm for the refill one. They don't have to cancel the patient. But for a new prescription, it's required by law to be uh, counseled. So the mom will take the prescriptions and drive to home or whatever. So it's convenience. Drive it through, provide convenience. Pharmacy op opens. 24 seven, some pharmacy chains, they do that. Walgreen or Walmart, CVS, all those chains are usually open 24 seven. Not all the sites, but at least they have many of them. So if you have an urgent issue during night, it's not like critical, but if you need something, you can go there. 
So expectation, as I mentioned, as a patient, I bring my expectation to the pharmacist or to the physician and if this physician pharmacist meet the expectation, 